All right, in this demonstration, I want to talk to you about the scale tool, which is right here in the tool panel. Okay, it looks like two little boxes, one's getting bigger, and it's got an arrow. Right? Makes makes it look like it's scaling. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is grab my black arrow tool, and I want to show you some different ways that you can scale. First of all, if I just select an object, right, and then I start moving very slowly moving my cursor around, you start to get these contextual clues about how you can do sort of free transformations. Um, if I hover over the corner, see there's a point in the corner because basically a vector program creates closed paths of objects and the paths consist of different kinds of lines and, and anchor points that you can drag. Uh, and and an, Square technically only has four points, it only has four corners, but it also gives you these little handles off to the side that if I wanted to scale this disproportionately, you see it tells me how big I'm making it on the screen. It says width is constantly changing, the height is staying consistent. If I were to drag that and drop it like that, then now I've got something that is not a square any longer. I still want you to keep your stuff in squares, so I'm going to undo that. All right, but that's one of the ways you can drag stuff out. Now, if I just click and drag this top corner, I can do something where I'm scaling in both directions. You can see that it is no longer a square, but I did scale it in both directions. Okay, I'm going to undo that again. Now, if I wanted to square, uh, scale this so that it stayed just the same as a square, but just smaller or bigger, I need to click and I need to hold and then press shift and then start dragging and then it will constrain the proportions so that the x and y axes are both uh, scaling at the same uh, ratio okay and so now i've got something that is a different size and this is where you can really start to mess around with your scaling and that's kind of a lot more interesting to look at actually right so that's one of the ways that you can easily scale now if i were to click this object and i were to drag it from the center and I always start dragging out holding down shift it does the same but notice the way that it's scaling it's no longer dragging it from one corner it's dragging it based on the left edge now if I grab this right uh, handle and I hold down shift and I start dragging you see that the left edge is staying consistently in the same place okay I'm going to undo a couple of those steps and then if I do the bottom, of course, you can see the top is staying consistent where everything else is doing what it's doing. I'm going to undo that. Okay. Um, you, so you get the idea. And then again here, if I hold down shift, the, the top left corner is staying the same as I draw out the bottom right corner. I'm going to undo. Now, if you want to scale something so that it scales out from the center point, what you need to do is you need to click and hold. Okay, and this is while you're scaling, not duplicating, okay? So you're going to click and hold, and you're going to hold down Shift, constrain the proportion, but you're also going to have to hold down Option, so that as you draw, the Option key isolates the registration point from the center, okay? And so now I just scaled something up from the center. So those are all really important little uh, key commands. I'm going to undo that. <clears throat> and so you need to practice getting used to doing these different little key commands. And when I say, just remember, when I say option on Windows, I mean Alt. Okay, so sometimes I get to talking a little bit fast. If I say command, I mean control for Windows. Okay, so just, just a reminder. Now, um, I want to show you also how you can actually use this, this tool over here. I'm going to select a different object for right now. I'm going to select the one on the bottom. And if I go down here to... Or go over here to the rotate tool I'm going to click it and then you see it just gives me the four corners it doesn't give me all those other handles because remember the other handles were part of what's referred to as free transformation by the way the free transform button right here is what well, is right here and it gives you basic th free free transformation stuff um, uh, options I should say uh, but that is the native behavior whenever you select an object I'm going to go back over here to rotate and you see that it just gives me these squares. Now, when I have rotate, you see I don't get all these little curved arrows and things like that. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not talking about rotate. I'm talking about scale. <laughs> My apologies. So I'm going to click on the scale tool. And then you see I, get like, uh, I don't get all those options. I'm just getting a precision point. So if I wanted to drag something out, I can do that. And I hold down shift. You can see... If I do hold down shift, it starts to change the orientation, okay? 
uh, it gives it uh, proportional scaling. I'm going to undo that again. Now, here's the thing that's even more interesting, right? If I double click the scale tool, I get this contextual dialog box that pops up, all right? And it gives me some different options. I can do a uniform scaling or a non-uniform. So non-uniform would be where it's either wider than it is tall or taller than it is wide or whatever. If I do a uniform scaling though, I can do, let's say that I want it to be uh, half again as big, all right? So that I would then say that I want it to be 150% of its size. Now I can say that it's a preview, right? And then it'll show me that preview. And then if I go over here and I change this to like uh, 25%, or 20, let's say 20%, I have to deselect preview and then reselect it, and it shows me how big that square is going to be. I can't just, it doesn't do a live update on the preview button. You have to deselect and reselect. Okay, so if I wanted to say it's 200%, let's do a deselect, reselect, and that's how big it's going to be. Now, what's really cool, right, is I can just leave it like that and say okay, or I could hit copy, right? And what it's done now, all right, it, you don't see that it's done anything, but let me go over here to my layers, and I want to show you something. Let's, uh, I'm going to drag my layers panel open. So before I had five boxes, remember I had one, two, three, four, five. Oh, now I've got a sixth. So that should tell you something. It actually did copy it. Now the problem is, there, it's not actually a problem. The reason you don't see the other box is because this one's bigger and it's on top of it because it made it uh, based off of the same center registration point. So um, if I go and I take my move tool, I can either drag it over or the other thing is if you're really not sure what happened, you could start turning different things on and off to see what's happening and you can see right away that the old box is still there but the new box is just on top so what I can do now is I can take this and I can move it and uh, it's out of the way now I've got too many boxes right so but that's just a, just so you know that's a way that you can copy stuff and scale at the same time and do it with absolute precision okay and so that is something that is uh, really, really handy. It's really useful if you need to make something exactly a certain dimension, larger or smaller. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, anyway. Okay, so um, the other thing, too, that I didn't mention, uh, that I should mention, I'm going to just delete this box real quick. I'm going to select this box again. And remember, we have a stroke on this, okay? So let's say that... Um, Let's, let's go back over here and let's use this uh, rotate, or excuse me, scale tool. All right, I'm going to double click that. And you'll see here it says scale corners, but it doesn't say anything about scaling stroke and effects. You notice that in my preview that I have checked, this, the stroke is actually still the same original size. It's, I think I had it at like one point or something. If I want this stroke to scale also, then I need to click that box. I, I didn't show you that before, but I think that that's something that's actually very useful. And so the larger it gets, the, the larger the stroke gets uh, proportionally, right? Okay? So that's, that should make sense. And sometimes that's really important to either have on or off, depending on what you're trying to do. If you still, regardless of how big your objects are supposed to be, if you always want your stroke to be the same exact size around all your objects, you need to make sure that you turn that off. Okay, but in a lot of cases you want it turned on. So it just really depends on what it is that you're doing. I'm just going to cancel out of that. So you might be wondering, okay, why would I even really want to use that? There are a lot of different reasons that you might want to. Um, th the example that I just showed you where you made it bigger, yeah, you can get a precise point, but sometimes you want boxes within boxes or circles within circles. And so something that's kind of nice is if I go here and uh, let's go... Uh, real quickly back where we were. Let's double click the scale tool and let's go and we'll say scale strokes and effects. Actually, let's leave that off for now. And then instead of doing 200%, uh, let's uh, look and see what it would look like at 50%. And it's the thing is, it's not going to show you in the context of the other thing, but if you know you want something 50% smaller, you can click copy and then now you've got a box within a box, but it looks like it's a framed thing right? Because of the way that it, the smaller box is now sitting on top. You can see here in the stacking order that it is sitting on top because it's got that stroke around it. So that is one way of thinking about this. If you select this box, you could also go to the stroke and 
like really increase the stroke too. Okay, so uh, I'm going to end this demonstration here, and in the next one I'm going to talk about rotation and reflection.